Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful that we can come to you uh, not just when we're in church or, or um, in a, a holy place where, where uh, there are stained glass windows and it's perfectly quiet. Lord, even in the midst of our, our chaos and the craziness of the day of raising kids and going to work and, 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 and paying our bills and doing our jobs, you're here with us. And, and every step that we take, we are walking on 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 holy ground because you have made this earth it belongs to you and every every activity of our life is a sacred activity because it is ultimately uh it's accomplishing your purposes not only for us but but for the kingdom of god and so we thank you that uh, you have saved us and that you have forgiven us through faith in your son jesus and we thank you that you can use us in all of our uh, inadequacies and in all of our, our need, you, you, you fill those needs and you equip us to do your work. We thank you, Lord, that you made us and that you've given us purpose and that we find our identity in you and it's solid, it's strong. Help us to be the people you created us to be today, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, we've got about 16, 17,000 people here uh, gathered around the campfire. And uh, we have been looking into this idea of, of, of who is the ruler of this earth. And, 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 and I think that most of us just know extinct, instinctively in the family of faith that, well, that the ruler of the universe is God Almighty, right? Um, it's, it's no one but the Lord of heaven and earth. But we talked about how there are three options here. We could say that, well, no, Satan is actually the ruler of this world. And I understand that. I read the Bible. I understand that he has been referred to as the God of this world. Um, but uh, that has certain consequences to it. And it's got to be understood rightly or we can draw wrong conclusions and end up in a real mess and end up with wrong attitudes and lose our motivation for transforming the world that we're in. If we believe that, that God is the ruler of the earth and that Satan is a defeated foe, that makes a big difference. The other option is that man perhaps is the ruler of the world. And I'm gonna just, by way of reminder, show you these one more time. And, uh, and this is gonna be really cool. So if Satan is the ruler of this world, if he still is, if he's not been defeated, if he's still um, uh, ruling and reigning over planet Earth, well, then it follows that, that we have an essentially corrupt government and that government controls the home, the school, the culture, and the church. And, and, and God is, is really only king and ruling in the church and in spiritual things. Uh, ruling in your heart, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's Lord of heaven, but he's not necessarily Lord of earth. Now, the view of early Americans, the view of um, Christians for thousands and thousands of years is that, no, there is only one God and ruler of heaven and earth, and it is the Almighty. And he has given us his word in the Bible, his absolute moral standards and his truths that set us free. And self-governing members of the family of faith willingly, joyfully, with all of their heart, embrace these truths of the Bible. And then we, as the family of faith, are equipped and expected to lead our homes and to guide the church, to create the culture, and to educate our children in the way that they should go. And Satan, as a defeated enemy, as a, a, a lion who roars and prowls about looking whom he may devour, is a toothless beast. He had his head crushed at the cross. He's slinking off to the lake of fire, trying to take as many people with him. He knows that his time is short. But there's another view, and it's the view of man being the god of this earth. I'm sorry, the ruler of this earth. Now, if you're an atheist, this is your view. If you are a secular humanist, what you believe then is, is that there is no god. So God can't be the ruler of the world and there's no Satan either. Uh, that's just all sort of fairy tale uh, stuff. And so man is the ruler of the world. Now, if man is the ruler of the world, then here's what follows. If man is 
ruler of the earth, then there is no absolute transcendent truth. Uh, man just makes up what he wants to be true uh, and can change definitions uh, any time because there's no absolute transcendent truth. And what that means is that the strongest men will dominate the home and family, the church, the school, and the culture. And God down below there, well, he doesn't exist or he's just irrelevant. It's kind of like if you want to believe in God, you can. If you want to have that in your mind, well, he, if he makes you feel good, that's great. But he's irrelevant in terms of how the world is going to be governed and how it's going to operate. If, if man, and by man, I mean mankind, men and women, mankind. If mankind is ruler, then ultimately um, the strongest win, survival of the fittest. And, and mankind without the Holy Spirit of God will dominate every aspect of our culture. Now, there's consequences for this. And this is what I, I, I want us to look at right now. I'm again looking through the, uh, the American Covenant, the untold story, and this is a fantastic chapter. And uh, if you see man ruling the earth, and that's known as secular humanism, and this is the dominant view today in our culture, perpetuated by the media and by our governments and in our, our schools for our kids, uh, then your, you see that your commission is to do whatever you choose to do with your life since, basically, you man is his own God. You see your mission is to have fun, eat, drink, be merry, and choose to do whatever you think is right in your own eyes or what collective man, the government, thinks is right in their own eyes because you are your own God. Secondly, if you see man ruling the earth, then you also see Christian culture, godly culture, as old-fashioned, irrelevant, and restrictive. Right? I mean, kind of like, kind of lame. Kind of like, why, 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 why put a wet blanket on all of the fun? Why put a religious straitjacket on yourself? Why go back to those old dinosaur, outdated, outmoded Neanderthal ways of, of biblical values? That kind of culture is like, like, done. We're past that. If you see man as ruling the earth... If you see man ruling the earth, then, then all human activity is guided by human reason and evolution, not guided by the hand of, a, of an all-knowing, uh, all all-loving God, not guided by providence to accomplish his will and to bring you to freedom, but it's just guided by human reason and evolution. Man is just a higher animal in a mysterious universe. That's the, that's the implications of, of, uh, of that worldview, that we're just animals, we're higher versions of animals, and we live in a mysterious universe that we don't really understand how it got here. We don't understand, we, we don't believe that there's really any purpose to it or a design to it, that it's, uh, it was a really, a, a really great accident that happened and over time through uh, reproductive processes and the environment and a, and, a, and a desire to survive that we're higher evolved animals. We're an overarching worm. We're lucky mud. Uh, we, at the end of the day, are all about survival of the fittest. That's a scary way to live. And many people uh, are forced to live under governments that believe that the strongest rule. If you see man ruling the earth, then reformation, uh, transformation, uh, heavenizing the world is unnecessary and it's actually impossible since there are no absolute principles to which man should reform. Does that make sense? That the idea of making the world a better place is... Uh, really unnecessary because the world is just what it is. I mean, we're part of it. We're, we're just an evolved uh, portion of the creation and we're just all doing our thing. And so how can we aspire to reform the, the, a broken world? We really can't even say that it's broken, right? It's just how it is. How can we say that we want to reform it to, to equality and liberty and justice and truth and love? What, what even are those concepts 
apart from a transcendent God who gives us those values in his word. These are just human constructs and we're just evolved animals. We're just uh, uh, bigger brained, better equipped bacteria. And so what is there to ultimately say that we should be in this world? It's just your opinion. Not necessarily better. And this is ultimately where we, where, where we end up. And Dr. Foster says the above contrasts illustrate the importance of ideas in determining consequences because to the degree, let's hear it is, to the degree to which those in the family of faith have abdicated their leadership role and denied that God is the ruler of the earth when we don't take positions of leadership in our home, when we don't, when we don't take the lead in educating our children, when we don't move into places of wisdom to guide our culture in the, and the media and take positions of leadership in government to make good laws, what ends up happening is we let people with worse values fill the void. And I think that's how we've gotten into the mess that we're in right now. Hey, listen, there is great hope for our, for our families and for our communities and for our nation. And the great hope is getting on this train right here. It's, it's, it's not conforming to the pattern of this evil world system, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind according to the word of God. If we believe that every square inch of planet Earth belongs to our loving creator and he has purposefully put you and I on this planet to take care of it and to love and care for one another and to thank him and to honor him and to obey him, it all leads to blessing. Blessing, blessing, blessing. You may say, Kirk, open your eyes. Don't you see how bad things are in this world? Yes, I do. I'm not some wide-eyed optimist that's not being re real. I'm actually being more real than those who think the world must get worse and worse. Look, I have a home here. I, I, I love my home. But if you were to tell me, hey, Kirk, your house is filled with termites. It's got termites all inside the two by fours in the middle of the walls. It's really bad. Well, if I had the view of saying, well, gosh, the termites, there's just more of them than there are of me. They're more powerful. I can't see them. I can't get to them. I guess they're in charge of my house. I would have... No choice but to say to my kids, guys, let's get out of here before the roof falls. Our only plan is to escape this place. Let's just stay alive long enough to have a exit plan and get out of here. And a lot of people in the family faith, they're kind of feeling that way. Lord, just get me out of here. The whole thing's coming down. I wouldn't put the house in charge of, of, of my children who don't have the wisdom that their mom and dad have to take care of their home and deal with termites. I don't have a lot of hope there either. I certainly wouldn't let gangs move into my house and turn it into a slum. I wouldn't let, I wouldn't let enemies come in and, and take over. But if I'm in charge of my house, if my wife is in charge of my house, we have great hope because we've been given what we need and we can cast a vision for our children and together we can, we can eliminate the termites and we can restore integrity to the framework and we can strengthen our home. This country, this is our home. We're not talking about America like it's some special unique nation uh, as sort of like appointed divinely by God. That's not what we're saying. No, that flag back there, that just represents our home. This is where we live. And we don't want termites or anything else to, to deteriorate it. The Bible says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's what we're talking about. God is on the throne. 
And he tells us in his word, blessed is the nation whose God is Satan? No. Whose God is the strongest men and women on the planet? No. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. He is the Lord of my heart. Will you acknowledge him as the Lord of your life? Because he is. And he invites you to come to him for healing and forgiveness and a new heart and a new life. That's what revival is all about. Revive. It's, it's bringing something to life again, putting life back inside of you. That's what we need personally in our homes, our families, right? And that's what we're looking for in our marriage, uh, in our nation, a reviving new life. So love being with you guys tonight. And uh, God bless you. Enjoy your time with your family. Kiss your kids. Give them a blessing. Maybe something like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and your family and give you peace. Good night.